Hey guys, I'm here playing Solar 2. This is a new game on Steam that has just come out for the PC. It reminds me a lot of games like, uh, say, Osmos or a game like Flow. Basically, you play as celestial bodies of an ever-increasing size. So you start out as an asteroid, and then as you gather more mass, you become a small planet, then you can get life, then you become a star, black hole, etc., etc. Rather than tell you about it, I think it would be more prudent to actually show you. So let's hit enter here. I'm using the keyboard instead of a controller. And I've started a brand new game here, so I'm this asteroid hanging out in the center here. So our basic objective right now is just to collide into other asteroids. And when we do that, uh, our mass increases. So you can see that asteroid was a little bit too big for me, but actually maybe now I can take it in. Well, there we go. I'm up to mass of about 6 right now. And I think once you reach uh, mass 20, you become a planet. But... At every stage of the game, and there are multiple stages, I think I mentioned them all in that intro, there's asteroid planet, life planet, so you can actually get, like, life to grow on your planet or evolve on your planet, um, star of, like, medium, large, and small size, and then black hole, black hole is late game. But at every stage there are missions, so that's what my HUD is pointing me to right now, so let's go see what one of these missions are, is for, uh, asteroid. So it turns out that dinosaur planet I destroyed before was just a scout. We've now located the dinosaur home system, so this is the second mission in, like, the destroy a planet mission set for, uh, for this. So basically what I have to do here is just take my asteroid and ram it as hard as I can into the planet to destroy it. So we're just gonna follow this arrow until we get to the relay station, basically, and see what's up here. Alright. A dark matter asteroid, okay, how do I do that? destroy anything near it when it is destroyed. Destroy the dinosaurs, then return to base. Okay, do I do I hit this? I'm gonna hit this into the dinosaur planet. Okay, let's take this. Now, there's kind of like two games going on here. There's like a meta game, and there's the, the actual missions. So the missions are, I guess, the closest thing that this game has to like linearity, or a, a campaign mode, for lack of a better term. Uh, which is actually a, a pretty horrible term for it. Oh, oh god, it's going... It's going too far, too far, too fast. I can't catch up to it. But of course, oh, where is it? It, I uh, accidentally created a black hole, which you know that happens to me all the time in my daily life. But the uh, let's try a different mission. The meta game here is that also we're trying to like grow into a small planet and then grow into a black hole, create a star system and stuff like that. So basically, I'm going to ignore missions for a second and just kind of try to get myself progressing through the game so you can see what's up. Because the asteroid here is very, very early game stuff. So let's, we got to collide with probably, I don't know, three or four more asteroids, depending on their sizes. Or maybe it doesn't depend on their size. Maybe we only get one, one mass per asteroid. Oh, I don't want that mission. Right, let's come back down. Take another pass through these asteroid fields. Let's talk about the game itself a little bit and how I feel about it. Uh, control? Fantastic. Uh, the control is superb and it really feels like you're kind of like floating around space right now. Uh, I, for $10, I don't really think I could recommend this. Unless you were a fan of, uh, again, like Osmos or Flow. If, if you could, like, keep yourself satisfied in those games for a long time, just kind of with the ambience of it, because, I mean, the music and the visuals are fine here and it's, it's, it's relaxing. So, uh, there is that, but I, I probably would not recommend this to someone as, like, a, an impulse purchase, because you're probably not going to get a whole lot of playtime out of this unless, I don't know, unless this is really up your alley. So now I've become a small planet, and I can get these asteroids uh, orbiting around me with some clever piloting. And basically, once they start orbiting me, I can either, I guess, use them as some kind of shield, or I can hit the L key, suck them all in, and gain a little bit of mass, and then I can slowly start to become... Uh, a larger planet, and I'm gonna do that basically as soon as possible. I wanna skip by the planet stage and get to the star stage, because that's where things get the most interesting that I have seen them in this game. The the major problem I have with this game is that, you know, surprisingly, it's actually a little bit too hard. The difficulty ramps up way too quickly, and I'll explain why uh, once I get past life planet and onto, uh, onto star systems. Because that's where I think the game's expectations actually get a little bit unreasonable. We're talking about positives for the game. There are a lot of positives to draw from here. Uh, I was 
kind of expecting this game to be pretty bad when I when I picked it up actually or when I when I requested my review copy which is maybe not the the best thing for a journalist to do but it's just the name was so generic solar 2 okay like whatever that doesn't intrigue me in the least but after playing it I was pleasantly surprised this is not like a a one star game or a two star game this is definitely a solid three stars if you're a fan of this stuff uh, but it does ramp up in difficulty a little bit too fast most of that uh, that three star performance for it I think comes from the the aesthetics like visuals are fine maybe a little bit generic but there's nothing wrong with that uh, but the music is so good, and this is something that indie games have going for them a lot these days. Just really fantastic music, saving what would otherwise be a, maybe an unremarkable experience. And I don't mean that uh, you know, with any offense to the developer, because obviously things like this take a lot of work to put together. I think this is a fine creation, it's just really not up my alley, and it, it strikes me as more of, a, more of an experience than a game. Which I, you can, you know, I guess you could take that as a positive or a negative. So by sucking in those asteroids, I become a life planet. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now evolution will take place on my planet, and once my evolution completes, uh, there will be ships that will spawn from uh, my my planet, and I'll actually get some guns on my planet itself, so I can take on uh, other star systems. Basically, the there are like AI controlled enemies in this game, but they don't take the they don't take the the face of like armies necessarily or other other like ships although sometimes they do um, more you're fighting against other star, star systems for resources so you might be like oh I really need these asteroids I really need this life planet that you have so you'll send your ships in you can see my ships right here uh, to destroy this stuff sometimes uh, and now all these asteroids are free for me to take and then my ship just flew right into me uh, sometimes life is a good thing and sometimes life is a bad thing. Sometimes they can destroy things that you want, like they'll just blow up asteroids for no reason. So I'm gonna stay away from this guy, because I think he's got a... Or actually both of these guys, I think they've got a few more resources than I do, so I'm gonna stay away. So what we're seeing here as I fly around it is a, a really high level star system. This is... It's got a star in the center, if I could just go see it. I don't want to get too close because it'll explode. But uh, you can see there's two stars in the center there. Oh, I gotta get out of here. So once we uh, once we become a star, we'll be able to command star systems like that. So as a as a small planet or a life planet here, we can get asteroids around us and orbiting us, which is good because it causes us to increase our mass and then eventually become a star. But when we become a star, we can actually have planets orbiting us. So the ultimate goal is to be a large star, which I think allows you the opportunity to have eight planets around you. And uh, with those eight planets around you, then uh, you want to get those to eight life planets, and if you get those to eight life planets, you have kind of a, a small armada to protect your resources. But th the strange thing is, like, that takes a lot of work to do, and I, I really mean that. It takes a lot of work to get a star system like that. I'm probably close to an hour, I would say, of just basically grinding asteroids for all of your, uh, your colonized planets. But, that isn't really the end game. What you... the end game is basically becoming a black hole, and I'm not... Well, I guess I am going to spoil it, but there's not really much to spoil. It's not like there's a story mode, but, uh... Basically, when you become a black hole, your goal is to... Or, I, I hesitate to say goal, because like, your goal is to have fun with the game, basically. The experience here is what you make it. There's no, there's no objective, necessarily. But, uh, when you become a black hole, uh, you can suck in other black holes, and really, you pretty much do involuntarily suck in pretty much everything else in the universe, except for larger black holes, which can kill you. Uh, but if you gain enough mass, you actually cause a big crunch, so basically like a, a death of the universe, where it contracts uh, into a, a piece of infinitesimal size, and then there, another big bang happens, and you start again as an asteroid. So this is very much meant as a, if not a casual game, certainly uh, an atmospheric game, or an ambient game, ambient game, ambient game. I always get confused with that due to my, my French-Canadian heritage. Well, French-Canadian ancestry, anyway. Really, I'm just terrible at pronouncing things, and I'll try to use any justification I can to get around that, including making up where where my heritage is from. So we're almost at a small star here, and then things are hopefully going to start to pick up a little bit, and I'll be able to show you the mid-game, which is... <clears throat> again, excuse me, which is the kind of meat of the game, or the dominant portion of the game, and we'll do some missions there. And when we do those missions, I think you'll be able to see uh, what I mean when I say that the game is just a little bit too... Uh, it, too fast-paced in the sense that the difficulty curves uh, too highly. I think maybe these three asteroids won't do it, but the next ones I get will. Oh, no, that was enough. 
Okay, so I've become a small star, and I'm already being attacked by some ships. Before I do some missions, let's pick up some planets so you can see what's up with that. So, as a small star, I can hold three planets. So there's one, and worth noting, by hitting L, I can suck all of the asteroids that I have orbiting my planets in, which will cause a mass increase to those planets. So I've switched my viewpoint here, and I'm looking at the small planet. You can see it's got a long way to go before it gets to be a life planet, and it'll probably die long before that if I get into some kind of battle or something. So let's pick up this planet, and why not this one as well? Excellent. Hit L to suck those asteroids in. How are these planets doing? That one's kind of close to being a life planet, but still still not that that much. Anyway, let's, let's come up here. Yeah, let's do this mission. And hopefully at this point you'll be able to see why. Oh, well, maybe this is just a... Maybe this is just a fetch mission. These missions seem kind of tacked on, honestly, but it's, it's okay. It gives you something to do. So we'll hit enter. You need to take the swipe card planet quickly. As soon as you take it, they'll send in backup. Hmm. All right, well, I don't really have any forces, but why not? Let's give it a try. Maybe, I can, maybe it's just free-floating, and I'll be able to just steal it, basically. Ooh, I don't know about that. I think that star is larger than me, so I can't just steal the planet. But maybe if I knock it out? <laughs> maybe not. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to knock it off of its, uh, its gravity. There we go. Okay, now take it. Oh, God. Run. <laughs> All right, well, I've successfully managed to take the planet, which is further than I thought I'd get. Don't... You're going to blow up your own planet? All right, now let's take it to this, uh, this drop zone. I might actually succeed here. I'm really not sure what, what rewards you get for uh, for completing missions. I I used to think you got experience because like as a life planet you can pick up experience for your units, which will make them a little bit more skilled. But I'm not sure. I guess basically I'm doing this for um, for amusement, which I guess kind of makes sense, or to get some steam achievements. Oh, no, I lost the planet. Oh god, what a disaster. All right. Well, at least I started with some planets. Let's let's move on a little bit. So if I can suck in all these planets, you can see I get a little bit closer to being a medium star. And I think maybe I'll do one more mission, and then I will uh, then I'll call it a day here, and uh, you know leave you guys to make your own decisions with respect to this game. Again, as we approach the end of the video, I'd like to reiterate that um, this is not necessarily a game that I would recommend for everyone. But if you are uh, intrigued by this, maybe it's worth checking out. Ten dollars obviously is not cost prohibitive, but uh, you know, it's a lot of money to a lot of people, and there's a lot of great ten dollar games, so the fact that it's got a small price tag isn't necessarily an excuse. And actually, I'm doing pretty well with this star system. Let's see, I've got two life planets, I think. Barely life planets, but still life planets. That one's actually doing alright. So let's, let's try another mission. Maybe I actually have enough firepower to accomplish something at this point direct our star into this part. Um, I guess I wish to join the Brethren of the Holy Hole. That's pretty much what I've been trying to do since high school. Your first task is that of the missionary. Okay, now I don't feel so good about making a sex joke. Obviously, they got there before me. Confront this small planet by showing how you can protect it. Go find it. Alright. How can I protect it? I don't know. I, I can't even protect myself. Let's see. Alright. What am I supposed to do? Maybe I'll suck in one planet and then pick this one up. And I gotta defend it for 60 seconds, okay. This is the part that I don't really understand. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I destroyed it in like a second and a half. It's the part that I don't really understand because I don't really have control over protecting it. It's all controlled by my like AI planets and the ships that they command. But in any case, I'm gonna end the video now. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Solar 2, now available on Steam for the price of $8.99 in its first week, and presumably, like most indie games, it'll go up to $9.99 after that. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.